Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com. Follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as, we're, as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello. Welcome to episode 125 of Wise Advice. And, you know, as I always say as I do this show, it's a completely daily show. It's something I do every single day because I want to stay focused in my own weight maintenance journey. But sometimes there's other things that distract me. And, and if you follow along daily, you'll know that it's been a couple of days since we've had an episode release. And I want to let you know that we're back in the saddle in that regard. Uh, I, do a, I do a major fundraiser, uh, and it takes me, you know, it's months and months and months of planning, but all that culminates, and it did last weekend. So here we are. We're kind of getting that wrapped up, and now back in the groove, uh, have a lot of free time to get the show. So I want to just kind of thank you for your patience as I work through that aspect. I understand through all the text, the comments, the the Facebook posts that uh, that you guys need a daily level of motivation as well. I need it as well, so we're in the same boat with regards to that. But we have to find things along our journey that are tools, and we have to understand as we use the tools that they are just tools, and we have the ability to, to push around them to get this done. If you're relying on a specific tool to get this done, and that tool is the only way you're able to be successful long term, then we have to rethink our strategy. Because as any tool disappears or it becomes a little less stable than we initially thought, we have to have that internal ability to push forward, develop new tools, find new ways, and get it done. Now, of course, I want you to stay tuned into those podcasts. That's why I do it as often as I can. But I want you to start thinking about, yeah, what would I do if this goes away? And it's not going away. That's not where I'm going with this conversation. But what I want you to do is I want you to think about what is it that you're doing right now that is making you successful that will allow you to be successful no matter what tools are available in the future. Because you're doing great work. You're clearly getting it done. You're clearly staying focused. The fact that you're still tuned into the podcast continues to let me know that you're focused, that you have a goal in mind. You know exactly what you're working on. And this is just a reminder to keep you on that journey. Aubrey writes in with the first email, says, Dear Mike, I've been overweight since childhood. I have a long and storied history with overeating for all the emotional reasons so many of us can relate to. If I had to guess, I believe I joined Weight Watchers for the first time around 2001, but it may have been earlier. I'm 38 now, and I've had two children since I first joined. When I'm on plan, I lose, and like so many others, I get close to goal, and then I regain it all back. I'm saying my starting weight is 191 pounds because that was my first weight of 2017. This year has had so many ups and downs. I started a new job, which is a blessing, but also much more responsibility, you can read into that, stress, to go along with raising two small boys, being married, and all of the other adult responsibilities where they are frowned upon you binging on brownies or margaritas to cope. Last night, I told my husband that I am so tired of losing weight only to regain it again. He's been on this journey with me now for 13 years and has seen me all the way from around 140 pounds to 259 pounds pregnant. He looked at me and he said, I know, baby, but I think something is different this time. I think so, too. I think it's Connect, and the fact that Connect led me to you, I'm online only, so you truly are my meeting. When I discovered your podcast, I was at a low point emotionally, and it's really given me a fresh dose of motivation. 
I've often found that God's timing is impeccable in that regard, and he will bring someone along to walk beside you just when you need it, even if you didn't know you were doing that for me. This morning, I weighed in at 175.2 pounds. I'm only 16.2 pounds from goal. I'm getting there this time, darn it. Thanks for everything you do. God bless, Aubrey. Aubrey, congratulations on your amazing work. Uh, You're clearly focused. You're clearly getting it done. And I love exactly what your husband said and you agreed with is that it's different this time. I believe, just like you, I believe one of the game changers is this is a tool we call Connect, and that Connect is what's keeping you focused. Now, what you said early in your email is actually the key to all this. You said, when I'm on plan, I lose. Think about that. That is so true. There is no debate that the plan works. Every single person who follows the plan perfectly, whatever that means, but every single person who gives it their best effort to follow the plan will agree that the plan works. Where the plan suddenly doesn't work is where we quit work in the plan. We make modifications to the plan that are probably outside the parameters. We're not following it the way it probably exactly was designed. We don't really care, and we forget about why we started in the first place. All of those distractions come in, they kind of bust us off the plan, so then we kind of get frustrated and we feel like we're working it when in fact we're really not working the plan at all. So when you say that you're on plan, you lose, you have to, you have to now think about that. The reason this time you feel is different for you, the reason that your husband said this time is different is because the two of you agree that you have a level of focus and intensity that you probably didn't have the last few times you've tried this. Connect is one of those tools that reminds you why you joined. It reminds you that you can do this, and it's something daily that you're checking into an accountability partner to keep it done. Now, when you check in daily, it's different than checking in once a week. There's a lot going on you know, in the seven days between meetings. So in your online only, so it's probably even a little more difficult. I I know there's plenty of online people who've been very, very successful. But when you go to a meeting, you have that meeting for that one time, that one day. And then for the next six days, you need to find your own motivation, your own way to get this done. And Connect reminds you of that. So while I agree with you, Connect is a game changer. Connect is not the reason you're getting to goal. Connect in the podcast are not the reason you're making it to goal. You're making it to goal because at some point you have prioritized you in this process and you have said, I am worth it. You've figured out exactly why you're doing this and you're using the proper tools to keep you focused and to remind yourself exactly what it is you're trying to do. So you're doing fantastic work. I want you to keep up the focus. You know, let's just say, again, if Connect goes away, if the podcast goes away, how I open the show, will that cause you to lose focus? If that causes you to lose focus and you don't have a way to regain that focus, then you'll stop following the plan and then we'll say the plan doesn't work. So what I want you to do is I want you to celebrate the tools you have and I want you to dig a little deeper into your journey and find out what it is that you're doing that will always be there. Those non-scale victories are extremely important in this process. Because as you continue to lose weight, as you continue to live a healthy, happy life, you then find things that you have done, that you can celebrate, that you feel are the number one thing you will not compromise on, and that will keep you at goal. No matter what tools are developed, no matter what tools are out there, If you know why you're doing it and you know how to do it your way, you're going to get it done. So, Aubrey, congratulations on your amazing work. Uh, So many people are in the exact same boat, and they say just what you did is this time is different. I believe when you use those words, they're usually followed up by the words that you, you used in the middle of your email, and you said you are so tired of losing weight only to regain it. Combine that when you say, well, this time is different it's because you reached in early. You found out your why. One of your whys is that you're tired. 
You're tired of losing the weight to only regain it. You're tired of playing this game. I got tired of playing that game too, and I used that motivation to carry me to goal. So when you think that it's different this time, it's because you finally got to the point where you've had enough and you're ready to make that change. So congratulations. Uh, I'm so proud of you. I believe you can do this. I know you can. Out of Franklin, Tennessee, Rhonda writes in, says, uh, Hi, Fat Dag. I finally did it. I made it to Wonderland. I crossed the border into Wonderland a few weeks ago at my weigh-in today. I am no longer in the obese BMI category. This is huge for me. I've never been so happy to be classified as overweight. I've lost 35 pounds since joining Weight Watchers in late January of this year. The weight loss is slow, but I'm not stopping until I get to a normal BMI and then to goal. I wanted to celebrate these milestones with you because the Wise Advice podcast has been very instrumental in my weight loss. The podcast addresses so many concerns and applicable topics, often about questions or problems that I'm going through. I am online only for now, and the podcast is my daily dose of motivation to keep going. My goal is to lose 45 more pounds by my 25th wedding anniversary next May, or hopefully sooner. I plan to join meetings once I'm closer to goal to make a lifetime, but for now, your podcast and Connect are my main motivators and inspiration. My family has seen me attempt weight loss so many times before that I believe that they are skeptical that this time will be different. But I feel that it is different this time. I'm getting up between 5 and 5.30 a.m. to walk in the morning, and I often beat my alarm to getting up. I often have to stop to ask, is this really me that's getting up at 5 a.m. to exercise? My day seems to go better if I get 30 minutes of exercise in first, and it also clears my head and gives me a healthy mindset before the busyness of the day sets in. I am working on living the healthy life that I've always wanted to, but I always made the excuse that I didn't have the time, the energy, or I didn't think I could do it on my own without my whole family joining me. I was always a bit on the heavy side as a child, and I have struggled with weight, the weight issue all of my adult life since college. I literally can only think of one short period in my adult life since graduating college over 20 years ago where I have been happy with my weight and not felt that I needed to lose weight. I have lost and regained weight more times than I care to remember. I've tried it all, Nutrisystem, the Daniel Plan, counting calories, fasting, pills, shakes, you name it, and this is my fourth and final time joining Weight Watchers. I have always lost weight with the Weight Watchers program previously, but I would get to a place where I was happier with my weight, and I start thinking, well, I can do this on my own. So I would stop attending the meetings and eventually gain the weight back. I joined Weight Watchers in January of this year after realizing that I was not in any pictures at Christmas. How sad. I had worked so hard to make the holiday special for everyone, but if you were to look back at the pictures, it appears that I was not even present. After joining, I lost 15 pounds rather quickly and then had a period of backsliding with a bit of a weight gain. I recommitted to get serious on the plan in March after I saw myself in the Easter photos and I realized I had really been in denial about my weight. I have two beautiful daughters who are young adults and I'm tired of being ashamed and how I appear next to them. I started following you and some other people on Connect and your podcast has been a real game changer. When I heard your podcast about complacency, episode 72, it really hit a nerve, and I feel it was one of the answers as to why I have lost and gained weight so many times in the past. The complacency piece, coupled with the fact that I did not get to my true goal with my previous attempts, was a definite aha moment for me. In past attempts, I would get to a better place regarding my weight, yet I was not satisfied. Your advice, get to goal and your voice on the podcast saying that we listeners can do this and that you believe in us 
makes me believe that I can get this done. It gives me the resolve to believe in myself and and continue working the program on the hard days. I have written down my why, and I keep it at my desk, and I read it weekly. And during the times when I feel I need a bit of extra encouragement, when it gets hard to stay on plan. I would like your advice, your input on a couple of areas that I've been stumbling that have been stumbling blocks for me in the past. This sounds strange, but in the past, when my weight loss has become noticeable and people start commenting on my weight loss, it has triggered something in me that makes me revert back to my old ways. I feel the people commenting mean well and they are sincere with their compliments, and on one hand, I feel very proud that they noticed my efforts. Yet, on the other hand, I feel so very ashamed that I was, am, overweight. It triggers something inside of me that makes me want to run and hide and eat. It's like I am ashamed they noticed I was fat before, although it's pretty obvious, and don't want to draw attention to myself or my weight. I live in a community and have many friends that live a very healthy lifestyle and some family members, the in-laws, who are naturally thin. I can note a specific time and a comment on all of my previous weight loss attempts when my weight loss was brought up in conversation, and that exact point in time seems to be the point where I stopped. I am again nearing the point with my weight loss that people are beginning to notice, and it scares me to think that well-meaning commenting comments will derail me again. This is the craziest thing. One would think it would provide additional motivation, but seems to have the opposite effect. Do you have any suggestions or advice on why this is happening and how to deal with it? My other stumbling block is the holidays. It's just October, but I'm already feeling some angst about the upcoming holidays. I don't want to gain weight over the holidays. There are so many celebrations and get-togethers that revolve around food. It seems like they will never end. And we have so many holiday traditions that revolve around the food, the dinners, the breakfast, the cookie swaps, special desserts, treats, sweets, you name it. And each person in the family has that one special dish they want so the holidays seem complete. I know I will undoubtedly hear comments from the family like, it won't hurt to eat this one this this time. The holiday is only once a year. Live a little. It's the holiday. Yikes, I feel anxious just thinking about it as I type this. Help. Mike, the constant encouragement and advice from your podcast has been an integral in my weight loss so far and has continued motivation for the weight loss that lies ahead. Thank you is so insufficient for all you have done to help me and the many others with all that you do. Many, many thanks to you for the podcast and all the relevant topics covered. Thanks also for your service to our great country. I look forward to reporting back when I've reached my goal, best regards and many thanks, Rhonda. Well, Rhonda, um, congratulations on your mindset. Uh, your mindset is to say that you joined the program and you're committed to it and you're committed to yourself to figure out how you can be successful long term. As you dig into your previous attempts, you've recognized that there is a pattern where at a point where you always then, you know, kind of do it on your own, you give up, you turn into self-sabotage. We know the program works. We just talked about it on the previous demo. There's no question the program works. You have to let it work for you. You have to not only work the program, you have to now adapt your lifestyle to a new lifestyle. That's the way to maintain the success long-term. If you're putting on a temporary Life. If you're living something a little temporary and doing things a little temporary, knowing that you can go back to your old ways, then maintaining the success is going to be completely different. You have to get to that true goal. You have to work towards that true goal. That true goal is the mindset that says something is completely different in this go around. Being ashamed of how you looked and being to the point where you say, I'm tired of being ashamed, that is the motivation that starts this whole thing. That is your why. The being tired, the being ashamed is a feeling that we've all have gone through. I can tell you when you get to goal, that goes away. 
when you step on the scale and you don't want to lose any weight, when everything in your closet fits, when you like taking pictures, when you suggest that we should take a photo, all of that shame and embarrassment is gone. So I believe in you because I made it to the other side. And I know that for me to get here, it wasn't easy. It took me five times rejoining before I could figure it out. And so what I know is that if I had to join five times, then other people can join one, two, three, four, many, many times. But the the true thing is, is if you figure out why you're really doing it, it doesn't matter if this is your first time or your 15th time. If you know truly why you're doing it and you're working to get towards goal, you can get there. Now, when you talk about the self-sabotage and, and the way where, where people compliment you, you have to understand exactly like you said, that they're meaning well. They're proud of you. They've noticed that you've taken control of your life. They've noticed that you brought you know, a healthy lifestyle in and that you're focused on losing weight. So you have to take those compliments and say thank you. You know, A lot of times as I was getting the compliments, I would kind of deny the fact that I was even doing Weight Watchers for a long time, and I, and I would encourage you to not do that. As someone reaches out with a compliment, I would encourage you to take a moment and say, what is it that they're complimenting? The fact that you were, you know, that you're in your mind thinking that you were so ashamed that you were overweight and that's what's causing them to notice, we have to flush that out. Yes, you're right. It's, it's obvious. Everyone knows. And everyone knows now that you're making a healthy lifestyle adjustment and it triggers something inside of you that says you want to run and eat as you hear it. I want you to have that trigger reaction differently. I want that trigger to say, you know what? Um, the fact that they're noticing means I've made significant progress. It means I have made a shift in my lifestyle where things now become noticeable. The suggestions that I would give you is celebrate every single success and milestone along the way. Continue to take photos along the way. Compare your photos now to the photos when you began. You will see a complete difference in your starting photo and a now photo. And when someone compliments you, a lot of times the reason we feel ashamed is because we don't see it the way that they see it. For someone to notice your weight loss, you know, it's different for everybody, but it's a good 10, 15, maybe 20% before it's truly noticeable enough for someone to say something. What's happening to you is that as they're commenting, you're still judging yourself based on what you see in your mirror every single day, and you have a, you're having a hard time seeing the physical change that they're seeing. So therefore, you turn into that self-sabotage mode and or you get in that mode of complacency where you're now you're, your pants are fitting just a little bit better, you feel a little bit better, and as they reward you, you give in and, and you agree with them that this is good enough. Episode 72 is the complacency episode we talked about. You have to know that getting to goal is the goal. Getting to the point where hopping on the scale, not wanting to lose weight, that is the end result. It doesn't matter if it's October, November, December. It doesn't matter if it's a family function. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas or if it's Easter. There will always be an occasion for you to overeat, whether it's from October to December or from December to October, the opportunity to overeat will always be there. So if we're going to say that, you know, because it's the holiday season coming up that I'm just going to give up for three months, then you haven't made the lifestyle adjustment necessary to sustain it. I want you to approach this holiday season differently. I want every meal that you sit down, I want you to, to make a conscious choice. Do I want this meal or do I want to get to goal? Do I want this snack or would I rather get to goal? You don't have to be right every single time. You just have to now say, I am making better choices now than I've made before. If you do that, and you compare your current photo to your before photo, and you look for the non-scale victories, the things that you're doing that you couldn't do before, all of that motivation tied together is what will carry you to goal. You absolutely can get there. Every single person has the ability to get to their goal weight. 
I want you to get there. I want you to join me on Team Lifetime because there is no feeling like it. When you get there, you'll know it. You have to take the compliments along the way, celebrate them into your journey, thank them for their kind words, and say, look out world, there's a lot more of that coming. Keep up the amazing work. Uh, next email uh, from Debbie. Debbie says, Dear Fat Dag, she's out of uh, Connecticut. I joined Weight Watchers on May 23rd, 2017 for the sixth time, I think. I'm down 9.5 pounds, not where I want to be at this point, but I have to be honest, and I have not really worked the program. I was feeling very discouraged, and someone last week mentioned your podcast to me. Monday morning, October 2nd, I pressed play while in the kitchen doing a few things before work. I had already packed my lunch for work. I left uh, leftover pasta from the night before. I had no idea how much I had or how many points it was. I listened to what is wise advice on episode one, and within a few minutes I had unpacked my lunch bag, and I was grilling a piece of chicken to put on a salad for my lunch at work. I've been listening every day, starting in order, listening to everything you have to say. To say this is inspiring is an understatement. When you say, when you're at a point, stop eating points, oh my, what a concept. I would always feel if I tracked, it was okay. If it was negative, well, at least I tracked. That works for special occasions, not everyday life. I am finally seeing that. You said you believed in me and that I can do this. Wow, so powerful. Not many people have said that to me. And when you describe the feeling of finally not wanting to lose weight when you hit your goal, I have never in my adult life felt that. I want to feel that feeling. My question for you is how do I make time for me without feeling guilty? I have a husband who works crazy amount of hours, two teenagers who are very busy, sporting events to get to, rides to give, houses to clean. The list goes on and on. I have a very supportive family. They would never hold me back. The guilt is all in my head, and I don't know how to get rid of it. I'm 44 years old. I have 66 more pounds to lose to get to goal. I've been married for 19 years. My daughter is 17. My son is 15. I have spent the majority of my adult life taking care of everybody else. I don't know how to take care of me. In my mind, I have always said when the kids are grown and gone from the house, I will then take care of me. Well, that is not working for me. I want and I need to take care of me now. I need to get to the gym. I need to focus on my health. I am just having a hard time learning how to do that. I'm beginning to wonder if the guilt that I feel is because I do not believe in myself and I'm using it as an excuse to not do the work because I really don't feel I can do this. Am I worthy of being at goal? Thank you so much for being my wingman and sharing this journey with me. Debbie from Connecticut. Uh, let's answer the obvious question, Debbie. is: um, Are you worthy of being at goal? Yes. Without a doubt, you are worthy of being at goal. You clearly are. Every single person is valuable. They add value to someone else in your life. And when you get to goal, you can then reach back into their life and add value back. You opened your email down 9.5 pounds. That's amazing work. You don't lose 9.5 pounds on accident. So you understand how the program works. You're tracking and you're getting the success. That's pretty clear. The fact that you said that you're not working the program, you're, you haven't really worked it, is where you, you have to now tune into that. Sure, tracking is very important, but it's an important part of this process. And tracking into the negative is a very important part of this process. Stop eating points when you're out of points is a very important part of this process. That is where the learning happens. If you continue to track negative while it's a very important part of this process, all that is doing is documenting all of the reasons that you're still overweight. If you stop when you're out of points, then you have to then go back and look at the days preceding that, figure out why you ran out of points so quickly, make an adjustment into the future so that you don't continue to go negative. 
when you get to the point when you've done with your weeklies and you're done with your daily points and you end the week perfectly on plan with the points left or or right at zero, that's when your mindset starts changing. You start changing the behavior. You start reaching for different foods because you understand that you know a 25-point lunch is not going to fill you up enough to carry you through dinner, and then you're going to be, be off plan at that point. So get rid of the guilt. Get to goal. The guilt that you have where you do not prioritize you, you're, you're a, a caregiver. You're taking care of your entire family. It's incredible that you're doing that. Your family is incredibly um, lucky to have you doing it. Now, if you don't take care of yourself, who's going to take care of them down the road? It's clear that you're carrying the burden for this entire family. And I'm sure that you're, you know, the family's very supportive. I, I get all that. But if you feel that you're doing a bulk of the work and that everything that you're doing revolves around them, what happens if you're not there to do it? You owe it to your family to prioritize you so that you can continue to be there for them. When you, when you finally get to your goal, when you finally are at a point where you're healthy and happy, the rest of your family will, will benefit. So I want you to work on that. I don't want you to feel guilty for doing that. I want you to feel guilty for just the opposite. I want you to feel guilty for not being there, for not tracking perfectly. I want you to be guilty, not say perfectly, that's not the right term. I want you to feel guilty about not giving your family your best effort as you go through this, and as a result, not giving you your best effort as you go through this. You clearly have, a, have the opportunity to get to goal. You've proven it by when you woke up and you listened to the podcast, you repacked your lunch, and you, you at that point, chose you for the first time. That's the beginning of your behavior modification that will get you to goal. You can do this. You absolutely can do this, and I can't wait to see you do it. I can't wait to hear it when you reach goal. Debbie, let me know how it goes. Uh, Mindy writes in says, hi, Mike. Here's a true story. I've been listening to your podcast almost since you began recording. I had never used the podcast app on my phone, but I found it easy to find your podcast and get started, or so I thought. I listened to my car, on the walks, on the metro. I binged when I got behind. One time, I binged for six hours in the car. A few weeks ago, I decided to download your app to see what I might be missing. I started listening to the most recent podcast, and I realized with both horror and delight that you sound very different on your app. I was so confused. I thought your app was broken. Not only do you sound different, you talk slower, much, much slower. Well, after a bit of investigation, I found out that my podcast app, the one I had never used before listening to you, is set to one and a half speed. For months, I have thought you were the fastest talking Midwesterner ever, and the fastest speed changes in your voice uh, changed quite a bit. After this crazy discovery, I watched Facebook Live to try and put your face with the correct voice. I'm still laughing about this discovery because I have told several Weight Watchers about your podcast, and I warned them about how fast you talk. They must think that I'm nuts. I'm so used to your voice at one and a half speed that I went back to my podcast app to listen to you there. You will always remain the fastest talking Midwesterner to me. I hope this brings a smile to your day. Thanks for all that you do, Mindy. And Mindy says, P.S. I'm down 42 pounds, eight pounds to goal. My one year Weight Watcher anniversary is this November 1st. Your podcast is one of the many tools that helps keep me motivated. Keep up the great work. Well, Mindy, thank you for writing in. I'm so glad that you were able to get this email out because if I wouldn't be able to talk for fat, I understand the dilemma. One and a half speed is crazy fast for a lot of people. Uh, So I'm glad you figured out how to get this done, uh, how to listen to the app uh, in the right speed. It makes it a little more tolerable, but there's some people that really prefer it at one and a half speed. So, you know, you have the ability to change it around. You can mix it up. You can listen however you want. 
Um, maybe I can start talking slower so that if you're listening at one and a half speed, it will then sound normal. Mindy, however you listen to the to the app, I'm glad that you wrote in. It made my day. It made me laugh. Uh, I'm I'm thankful that you went to the app store and you looked for wise advice and you downloaded the app. Uh, I think that's the best way to listen. Um, if you saw me on Instagram and on Facebook, you'll know that we have one million. We're over one million downloads on the, on the podcast. So that comes from the app. That comes from the podcast apps. That comes from all the different places that people are able to find it. Uh, and so I'm I'm thankful that you found it in the app. I'm thankful that you binged for six uh, six hours straight in the car, uh, and I'm thankful that you went through the crazy discovery to figure out which way you want to listen best. All of that reminds me that you're focused and you're committed and you want to get this done. You have eight pounds left to get to goal. You're doing fantastic work. You're down 42 pounds. You don't lose 42 pounds by accident. Congratulations on your one-year anniversary. That's an amazing accomplishment in itself, the fact that you did not quit. We talked about in this episode how we know the plan works. Very few people, if anyone, will disagree that the plan works. You've stuck with it for an entire year. That's gotten you down 42 pounds. Continue working the plan. You will get to your goal. Eight pounds for you is all it takes. And when you get there, you're not going to quit then either. You're going to continue going. You're going to get it done, and you are going to realize a life that is completely different. I'll let you know that the best part of my journey, the absolute best part as I was losing the weight, was not, I've said this before, was not from 260 down to 250, down to 240. It was not from 260 down to 200. The best part of this journey was the last 10 to 15 pounds for me, because it was that point that I went through a process that I'd never, ever been through before. I got myself to a size and a feeling that I'd never, ever experienced. Getting close to goal and being at goal are completely different. In fact, being two pounds away from goal and being at goal is completely different. It's why it's the same mindset when someone says, I only have 15 pounds to lose, only have 25 pounds to lose. They sometimes don't feel like they fit into this community. And it's why I say you absolutely do. Because the mindset of being overweight, whether it's 2 pounds, 25 pounds, or 100 pounds, is the same. You're not happy with yourself. You're not happy at the choices you're making. You're not happy at the way you prioritize your life. If that puts you two pounds over goal, if that puts you 25 pounds over goal, wherever that puts you on the spectrum, you're not at your best place in life. When you get to goal, those last eight pounds in your case, or if you're two pounds from goal, those two pounds from goal, when you finally get to a point and you hop on the scale and you don't want to lose any weight, it's completely different. I want you to get there. Not only do I want you to get there, I know that you can get there. And when you get there, we're going to celebrate. Celebrating is the number one reason we stay focused on our goals, because we celebrate along the way, we're reminded on the way of what it is we're going to do, and we share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com, click on Listen Now. Send in your celebrations, your comments, and your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. You can email me at fatdag.com. Uh, sorry, you can email me at onair at fatdag.com. I want you to email in because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. I want you to celebrate every single milestone along this way. As other people reach out to you and tell you how awesome you're doing on the plan, I want you to celebrate with them. I want you to thank them, and I want you to tell them that you're not done, that you're doing amazing work, that you're completely changing your life, that you've changed your mindset, that you're living a new healthy lifestyle, And then you be the prize and you show them that it's doable. And you show them it's doable. You've now built an even more supportive community around you and you're getting it done. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus.